One of my favorite advancements that's come from the evolution of 3D printing firmware is adaptive bed meshing. While traditional meshes probe the entire bed regardless of print size, leading to inefficiencies and inaccuracies, adaptive meshing tailors the probing to the specific model you're printing. This not only saves time, but results in a more precise compensation grid. We previously explored Camp, an add-on for clipper printers that enables this functionality. Its creator, Kyle is a H, let me know that him and his buddy Voidtrance worked to bring this over to mainline Clipper. This is something I'm really excited about, and if you've been waiting to try out this functionality, there has never been a better time. In today's video, we'll take a look at adaptive meshing in Clipper and go through the process of getting it set up. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. To get adaptive meshing working, we need to update our Clipper firmware. Depending on how long this has been for you, it may require reflashing your MCU. Because of this, I strongly recommend downloading a backup of your printer config just to be safe. A few weeks ago, we covered another great add-on for Clipper that once configured lets you create one-click backups of your config files that I'll have linked in the description. Once we have that, we're ready to update our Clipper firmware, and there's a few ways that this can be done. One option is to SSH into your printer, CD into your Clipper directory, and enter git pull followed by sudo service restart Clipper. If you have Kaya, the Clipper install and update helper, you can also use that to update your firmware. The last option, which is usually the one I opt for, is just pressing the update buttons under the system page of mainsail. This can be done in the Fluid interface as well, and I believe it's under Settings. If you don't see the Update Manager, make sure that you have it enabled. This is done by opening the Moonraker.config file and adding the Update Manager header, along with Enable Auto Refresh set to True underneath it. Then restart your firmware to see the manager. As for order of updates, Fluid recommends going from Clipper to Moonraker to the web interface and any other add-ons you might have. Hopefully when all updates complete, you don't get any errors. If you do, they will be called out so that you can address them. I had an error about the relative reference index set in my bed mesh section that I uncommented until I could investigate it further. If for some reason you were on an old enough version that your MCU requires a reflash, the warning message will be an MCU error, letting you know the Clipper version on your host and what's running on your controller are not compatible. In this instance, all that's required is to go back into make menu config and create a new firmware bin file that you'll flash or copy over to your controller. Now that we're up to date, we can configure adaptive meshing. The requirements for this are the exact same as camp. We'll start by going into our Moonraker config file and making sure we have the file manager header with enable object processing set to true underneath it. If you don't, simply add this anywhere in the file then save and close out of it. Next, open your printer.cfg file and add the exclude object module. If you've been running cancel object, you'll already have this, otherwise it needs to be added into this file. The last step that needs to be done on the firmware side is adding the adaptive command to your bed mesh. Any place that you're using the bed mesh calibrate command on the same line, hit space, then type adaptive in all caps equals one. This is what enables the adaptive functionality to be used instead of the traditional full bed mesh. In addition, there's another command that you can pass called adaptive margin, which takes a numeric value representing millimeters for how far outside the object you'd like the adaptive mesh to extend. I haven't found a need for this, but it's there if anybody does want to set it. The only other requirement for adaptive meshing is that you have label objects set in your slicer. In Orca Slicer, this is found within the other tab of the left sidebar under G-Code Output. In Prusa Slicer, it's under Print Settings, Output Options, Output File. If you're using Cura, label objects is automatic and there's nothing to configure. If you previously had label object off and you go to print the same file, the adaptive meshing won't work. You'll need to re-slice the files with label object active. For anyone running camp that wants to use the built-in adaptive meshing, disable the adaptive meshing from the camp settings file and add adaptive equals one to your bed mesh calibrate. I'm actually leaving camp installed alongside using the built-in adaptive meshing so that I can take advantage of camp's adaptive purging function. 
For some reason, when I got Clipper updated and the new meshing set up, my Z offset was way too high. I'm thinking it may have had something to do with me running a clicky probe setup, but all it took was me running a little paper task to get my Z offset set correctly and everything has been running smoothly since. You should now be up and running with variable meshing and clipper or have a much better understanding of the process involved to get it set up. I haven't had any issues with running the camp add-on, but I am still very happy to see adaptive meshing make its way over to mainline clipper. If you end up updating and get this set up, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if there is another Clipper plugin out there that you'd like to see me cover on this channel, let me know there as well. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.